So the Jews over here in this room, religious Jews, congregating and praying the mincha, the, the second prayer of the day, next to what's believed by Jewish tradition to be the tomb of King David. And yet the building is a building from the time of the Crusaders. By Muslim belief, this is a holy Muslim place. In fact, it used to be a mosque. And it's also claiming to be the site of the Last Supper. That's going to be a good one. Hello, welcome everyone to another vlog by Daniel the Digger. And this time, I'm looking for the site where the Last Supper took place. Not here. Let's go. Okay, I don't know if you can see if the camera can catch this hmm, unappealing, unimposing stairway leading to the second floor. And yet, this second floor actually leads to one of the most significant sites in the Christian world. What am I talking about? For this, we need to start, first of all, with the Gospels. The Gospels recording Jesus and the disciples coming to Jerusalem. And then, hold on, I don't want to trip over. And then, uh, as it's before Easter, before Pesach, the Jews wish to find a place, I mean the disciples, the place where they could all convene for a festive dinner meal, an event celebrated to this day, the Jews call it the Seder night. But where should we do it, Rabbi? They asked Jesus, as they are all peasants from the Galilee. They don't have any space in Jerusalem. And what he tells them is, go to a landlord who will show you an upper room. And that upper room will be the place where we will convene. Now, is this the location of the upper room? Is this the location of the site of the famous Last Supper? This is at least what Catholic tradition argues. But let's look at the evidence. First of all, we saw that the first floor of this building is holy for Jews. Over the top, you have there a minaret indicating this place was a mosque. What is inside that enables us to suggest that this is the site of the Last Supper? Let's check what the archaeological evidence is. Aha! Uh -huh. That looks interesting. It actually looks very nice. It's a beautiful design of an interior of a structure. Although, anyone with a bit of knowledge about medieval architecture should be able to indicate right away, in fact, that this building is actually, well, Gothic in style. Which means that this building dates uh, the earliest to the 12th century, as some scholars say. Most scholars will say, no, it wasn't built before the 14th century. One thing is for sure, it ain't from the time of Jesus. It is not Roman. Romans did not have pointed arches. Romans did not have the arches crisscrossing one another. This building is clearly medieval. And yet, by Catholic Christian tradition, this is the very site of the Last Supper. Well, all I have to say is, I'm sorry, as an archaeologist, maybe this is the location of the Last Supper. The coordinates of the event are not given in the New Testament. But to say that it happened in this building, the way it looks like today, I'm sorry. It just doesn't hold water. <laughs> it did hold <held> wine. <laughs> But it doesn't seem to make sense if you analyze the architecture of this building. And indeed, what is this building? So archaeologists suggest that this building was originally built in the days of the Crusaders or shortly after. But to commemorate and being part of a church from the time of the Crusaders that was
was actually commemorating something completely different. It was commemorating Mary. And Mount of Zion in general actually has many traditions embedded in it. The site of the Last Supper, uh, the place where relics related to Jesus were uh, maintained, the site of the interrogation by the high priest, the site of the Pentecost, the site where Mary fell asleep, you name it. And we will follow these uh, traditions and the sites that um, locate them, that claim to locate them later on. But in the series of following Jesus in Jerusalem, we are now reaching the site or the event of the Last Supper and asking the question of where did it happen? And the answer is in archaeologists, I hate to say this, we don't know. We can only relate to the text and the text doesn't give enough information. Yes, this is the second floor of a building. The text says it was a second floor of a building. The text says it was in Jerusalem. That's actually a bit tricky because this site is today outside the city walls. Maybe I'll go to the rooftop to show you this. We are on Mount Zion and Mount Zion today is not within the city walls of the old city. But the city walls of the old city as we have them today are from the days of the Ottomans. In the days of Jesus, and that was proven archaeologically, this was part of the city. So again, this may have been the site of the Last Supper, but definitely not in this building. On the other hand, archaeology here provides here uh, more interesting features and demonstrating just how complex things can be in Jerusalem. Because the Jews that you saw praying beneath us on the first floor of this building are following a tradition that developed in the 10th century that that is the site of the burial of King David. It doesn't really fit the biblical text which says clearly he was buried in the city of David which should be Silwan, which should be biblical Jerusalem, not here. But maybe, maybe, and I'm willing to accept that theory, later his bones and the royal bones of the royal family of the dynasty of David were moved over here. The tradition itself begins in the 10th century. It is recorded by Muslim sources and the Jews simply followed it and they follow it to this day. And apparently it was the Crusaders who also related this site to the event, to the site of the Last Supper. And later they started quarreling over the custody of the whole building. Later, I mean, when the Mamluks were in charge. And how did the Muslim Mamluks settle this dispute in their own very special way? They kicked both of them out, added a mihrab, and turned the whole thing into a mosque. <laughs> so yes, this is the only building in the world sacred to Jews, sacred to Christians, and sacred to Muslims. Welcome to Jerusalem. <laughs> now, up to 1948, this was all under Muslim control. Jews were forbidden to enter the first uh, uh, floor of the original Makam, only the uh, medieval two mark. But since 1948, it is under Israeli control. Yes, Israel failed to liberate, to, to secure the Jews living in the old city. It failed to include the Western Wall in the young state of Israel when it was born. It would be achieved only 19 years later in the Six Day War. But it did get a hold of this. And the state of Israel decided to make it all, yes, accessible to all, holy to all, but without any uh, monopoly of any religion. So Christians who wish to come and pray here, welcome. Muslims who wish to come and pray here, welcome. Also Jews for that matter. Anyone wishing to visit the first floor is also welcome. And perhaps that is, that is the best solution. A secular power, political power that ensures the access of all religions. And for that matter, there are also no religious signs here. I mean, it's known for the Christian world that it's holy to Christianity, but you don't see any crosses. There are also no Magen David. There is, however, quotes from the Quran over here. Okay, they, they did get away with it, but that's it. The building doesn't really show what it stands for, its sanctity,
but it is a remarkable building with a remarkable story. And as I promise, and it seems that I still have some battery left, let me take you now to the rooftop to show you a beautiful image of Jerusalem in the afternoon light. Now I must say as we go up, not everyone follows this belief that this is the site of the Last Supper. The Assyriac church, for instance, have their own space within the old city. I hope to be able to get to film there with the pandemic. Not everything is always open. But even if I don't, I have my reservations. <laughs> the building looks, again, very medieval and worse. It's not even a top floor. It's actually a crypt. So to say that the Last Supper took place there is, well, a matter of faith. Here is now the minaret of the mosque that was commemorating David by Islam. It has a bit of a funny shape, and I finally uh, realized why. An article uh, presented the fact that it was damaged by an earthquake, and later, when it was fixed, it wasn't fixed to its full height. So here, let me see if I can point to it again to show you the rather funny proportions of this minaret, like a miniature minaret, a dwarf minaret. And here you have some Jewish kids playing, using the rooftop as a playground. The sanctity of the building is on the first floor, but this is also of certain significance. This side is called Cheder Hanasi, the president's room. As between 48 and 67, when access to the Western Wall was forbidden, um, Bensvi, the President Bensvi, used to come here to be at the closest place that was pointing to where the Western Wall was. Yes, I'm talking about that general direction. And this uh, location gives us also a pretty good view of Mount of Olives as well as the impressive Domitzion complex that relates to the Pentecost, Mary's rest place and so on. We will review this site later on. Here we have a memorial for the Israeli soldiers who died in the battles of 1948 here. And you also have here a grand view of the Judean desert. I'm not sure, I think I remember that on a clear day you can even see the Dead Sea. But even if not, you can definitely see towards it from here, as well as the, uh, the Judean Desert. You can actually even notice the security wall that was created by the State of Israel at the beginning of the 21st century, realizing that Palestinians apparently are not too eager in agreeing to any peaceful offers like the Oslo Agreement. Raging terrorism eventually led Israel to create a buffer that proved to be very, very efficient. It is now far more safe. And uh, now the biggest threat is actually a virus. <laughs> so I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. Let me stabilize my camera. And please hit subscribe and hit like if you want to keep notified of uh, more material produced by me. And uh, if you're in a generous mood, wait, too much wind, too much wind. If, if you're in a generous mood, uh, I wouldn't mind a bit of a financial support because I really need better gear like this audio. I would really appreciate a proper micro audio um, wireless microphone to produce more contents but it is what it is if you wish to support in the description of the video you will see uh, a link to PayPal where it can be done so thank you all and God bless you and stay tuned because better stuff is still yet to come later out